And when you first started uh, doing out of body experiences, what was <coughs> one of the most um, strongest proof for yourself uh, that um, you can do out of have an out of body experience even in this realm? Okay, well. You talk about strongest proof. You know, I, we had lots and lots of evidence that what we were doing was real. We were keeping track of all the things that we learned in the out of body state, and we were only limiting ourselves. We were limiting ourselves to things that we could check them, things that were evidential. There wasn't any point just going off into inner space and doing something totally different and coming back because there was no way to check that. So we only did things that we could check, like real world viewing, healing. Uh, gathering data in the database about situations or individuals, going into the future probable database, trying to read uh, what the headline would be on next week's newspaper, you know, things like that. Uh, Bob would put numbers up on a chalkboard in, a, in another room after we were in our booths, and he would, uh, you know, we would try to go out the body and read the number, which is sort of a remote viewing thing. So we did a lot of that sort of thing, and by doing that, both Dennis and I knew that there was, you know, one in a thousand, one in 10,000, that the answers we were getting were just good luck. You know, just were, were random answers. So, and we had done enough statistics. You, know, you have to keep uh, statistics on what you're doing. So you, you might try to use your mind to heal somebody and they may get better, but that doesn't mean you did anything. They may have just gotten better anyway. So you have to heal, you know, two or 300 people and keep track of how many of them get better just after you do it. And then also look at what, what did they have? And what they have, was it chronic? You know, is it something they'd had for years and years and years? Or was it something like, uh, you know, a cold that could come and go, you know? So all of that goes into the statistics. So we knew intellectually that it was real. We were accessing uh, from another reality system and that all these reality systems were fundamentally real. But getting it in your intellect and getting it at a deeper level are two different things. And uh, for me, the, the, the big uh, experience for me, they've got it from the intellect down to the being level where I stopped asking the question, is it real? So up until then, I was always asking this question, yeah, that's pretty strange. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Well, we've got great statistics, but can't quite make myself, you know, say that it's real yet. And we resist that because we have this, you know, by that time I was in my uh, middle 20s, late 20s, and uh, we resist it because we grow up for, uh, for, you know, 28 years, I had a belief about materialism. So it was really hard to give that up. But I had this experience with Dennis where we went together in an out of body. It was a, it was a Two people going out the body together. And we're in separate booths that are, actually there were three booths there and I was in one and he was in three. So it was an empty booth between them. And all of them were completely soundproofed. You could get in there and scream and only a tiny little muffle would come out if you were standing outside. So we were separated by, by another booth. So we couldn't hear each other at all, even subliminally, it's just nothing. Uh, and we were, talking, the way it worked is that we had this microphone come down from the ceiling just above our lips, and we would talk very softly into this microphone while we were having the experiences. So we learned a parallel process that we could work our, our vocal cords and our lips while we were in an out-of-body state. Or we would do our things in the out-of-body state, come back, report, and go. It worked sometimes both ways. So we had we're instructed to go meet in, the, meet in the air above the lab. So we just said, get out of body, float up, up through the roof, hang out there until the other one came. And once we were together, we were to go off on adventure, but always stay together. So we did that. And it lasted a pretty long time. And there was a lot of evidential things that went on. In other words, it wasn't just, we sat in a gray fog the whole time. See, there wouldn't have been anything evidential there. But we saw things, went places, you know, met people, uh, interacted, had conversations. And when the two tapes were played, Dennis's recording of what he said and my recording of what I said, um, they were put on the tape machine and run, turned on exactly the same time. So, so they were synced in time. 
And uh, Dennis and I were having conversations, asking questions, answering each other's questions. We were uh, seeing the same things, talking about the same you know, events, the same people. So it was just so obvious that he and I had had the same set of experiences, the same stimulus that we were interacting with. And that was a that was the big one for me. You know, I just was kind of in a, in a probably a semi stupor for probably two weeks or three weeks, where it was just it just hit me in a way that was uh, kind of shattering, I guess, because it sh it shattered my beliefs about the nature of reality in a very deep level. And after that, I didn't have to say, "Is it real?" anymore. I knew that it was real. And I think that's the way most people are. You know, you, you dabble with it and you work with it and you work with it, but you're never really quite able to say how real it is until you have an experience that you just cannot deny and you cannot um, explain in any way other than it's real. It is the way it seems.